name is Dave Belt. I'm an academic advisor with the College of Sciences Advising Center at UNLV. And I'm here with Dr. Brian Headland with the Life Sciences Department. And we have the privilege of uh, asking him a few questions that we hope will be useful to you as students. First of all, Dr. Headland, how should students study this subject? I think for any subject, people want to involve as many senses as they can. You know, some people learn visually, some people have to talk to learn things. And so I, I kind of, um, it's partly a joke, but I partly tell my students to, to, um, to talk as much as they can ab about their, their classwork and to, um, you know, all sciences have, have a language really. And so I tell my students to practice saying names of bacteria in the shower and things like that and talking to their boyfriends and girlfriends and parents, uh, you know, about, about science. And that really helps them to, to say these words, get them out. It's really important for people to um, not only learn the material, but learn to communicate and actually be, be part of that material. So I think um, involving as many senses as possible is really important. It's also really important um, in biology, as in all classes, to really keep up. And, and so a lot of a lot of studying is about personal management. And so these days, everybody's lucky. We've all got Google phones and you know Google calendars, and so. I've got my phone with me almost all the time, actually not now, <laughs> but, uh, but my phone, you know, my Google Calendar tells me what to do. So I put a lot of time into organizing my, my calendar and it tells me what to study, what, what to do when. And so these sorts of management things are, are really important for students. Um, you'll probably hear 10,000 times to read things before class. That's a good idea. In some cases, you'll be super busy. You might not be able to. You didn't hear me say that, <laughs> but you might not be able to. But but uh, one thing that's really good to do if you can't read everything before class is to look through the figures that you're supposed to read. So those figures in the textbook, the graphs, pictures, hopefully it should tell you a story kind of quickly. And again, for people that are visual, like most of us, the picture says a thousand words, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can quickly look through those pictures, you've read five pictures, you've seen 5,000 words, right? And so that's a good way to, to get going, but students should pay really close attention to the legends under those figures and really try to understand them. So I think that that's um, something that I do when I read scientific literature. So often it's pretty dense, but if people look through the figures and, and, and pictures, um, that gives people a leg up. Perfect, thank you. Uh, what types of activities are extracurricular uh, outside the classroom should students in the life sciences pursue? Well, first of all, just like everywhere else on campus, there are a lot of clubs. So I'm a microbiologist, so I know about the American, so uh, American Society for Microbiology student chapter, and a lot of our students are, are involved in that, but there are lots and lots of them. A lot of our students are, are pre-med, so there's a, a couple of pre-health profession uh, uh, societies on campus, and people are very active with those. Um, aside from the clubs, there are a lot of internship opportunities. Um, again, a lot of our people are, are pre-health, and so uh, those students benefit a lot by shadowing doctors, um, shadowing dentists, or, or spending time in different places. Um, a lot of the students that are really interested in the sciences themselves and aren't, you know, pre-health profession, or, um, but really want to be scientists or, or want to work in laboratories. For those students, uh, undergraduate research is really important. Um, it's also good for pre-meds to do undergraduate research. Um, I wish we had more opportunities, but we really have some great opportunities at UNLV, and there's money for that kind of thing as well. So um, I encourage students to be creative, keep their eyes open. Um, don't wait till senior year for these kinds of opportunities. It's good to plan ahead. Um, when I take students into my lab for undergrad research, I try to take sophomore, second year students. So it's good not to wait. Very good. Dr. Hedlund, what types of skills do biology majors learn? Skills, that's a tough one, but, but uh, you know, when you go out into society, you know, people need to not only know about the science, but people need to know about communication, right? So any pre-health person needs to communicate with people about the science, but also uh, just being personal. Um, so that, that's something that might be a little bit off people's 
radar that, that is a good thing to learn. Mm, certainly. Um, which career fields do students in biology, what, what career fields are they prepared to enter and what is the career of, of a typical biologist? Yeah, as I've already mentioned some, a lot of our majors are, are pre-health professionals. So a lot of our, our majors are uh, pre-medical, pre-dental, uh, pre-farm, um, those kinds of majors, um, pre-physician assistants. So that makes up a, a pretty good percentage of our majors. But um, we also have uh, scientists. I've had some really outstanding scientists, uh, future scientists, in my labs here at UNLV. Um, also, I have students working at the Water District. I have students working in government labs. There are a lot of different possibilities. Um, really, a, a big, I think a big piece of, of advice for people who aren't pre-health professionals, um, really they have to be very creative. Um, you know, these days a bachelor's degree isn't, isn't enough to just go and get a job easily. So those people have to really keep their eyes open um, for the opportunities. Okay. Very good. And for students that have an interest in in uh, pursuing research, where is a good place for them to begin? Good question. <laughs> um, so I, I'm actually working a little bit on on uh, trying to streamline some pipelines for, for people um, to engage in, to apply to engage in, in undergraduate research. Right now there isn't a centralized portal for that or, or, or sort of clearinghouse of information. So right now, um, I think the best way is for students to contact their professors directly. Um, but people should keep their eyes open for other possibilities. Um, a lot of this really comes down to um, students looking for opportunities, keeping their eyes and ears open. Mm -hmm. And if people are here and they're engaged, they'll see plenty of opportunities. There's a lot going on at UNLV. Great. And the last question, Dr. Hedlund, what general advice would you give to students in the life sciences? on how to be successful and just things that you think might be important for them to know? I think it's the same thing that I just said. Um, there are a lot of possibilities out there and if people are here, people are active, keep their eyes and minds open, there's really a lot going on and, and uh, you know, those, those people that are really active, they'll, they'll always find something good to do. Also, it's good to pay attention to your heart. You know, um, When I was a kid, I used to, when I was two or three, I think I used to sit by the door and knock and tell, say, outside, outside. And so, um, and then I went outside and had insect collections and stuff. So it was uh -huh. pretty clear that, that for some reason I, I wanted to be a biologist when I was a kid. So people should never forget about that kind of thing. People can look into their hearts and their pasts and talk to their families and really understand what, what they're really about. Life's too short to do things you don't want, right? Yes. Thank you so much for taking some time with us. Thanks, it's been a lot of fun. Good luck. <laughs>